Miss Ladies and gentlemen, I I can't put into words how excited I am for today's episode. Uh, of course, it's your boy Gamero, the Pharaoh, the poor man's Robert De Niro. Uh, I'm joined here by my main man, Ill Logics, Yo. Craig Banderson, mm -hmm. in the building. And ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress the man that we have on set today, the legend, a man who's been in the game, the MMA game, for uh, it seems like, what, over five, six, eight, ten years now, a veteran, truly a veteran in the game. Um, uh, I, can't, I can't put into words how uh, extremely honored I am to present this man today. Ladies and gentlemen, we have in the house today, Alex Caceres. AKA Bruce Leroy. How you doing today? I'm doing good, guys. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for have for thank you for for coming on, brother. Uh, just a believe a, a week and a half out from your uh, most recent fight. Why don't you give us a, a rundown as to how how'd you go into that fight? What was the mindset? Um, how'd you get prepared for that? Well, I mean, uh, I have to admit, with everything that was going on in society as well as the whole coronavirus thing, uh, it was a bumpy. It was a bumpy camp. It was difficult um, to really get um, the training solidified in the beginning, be just because everything shut down. Yeah. So we decided we're gonna open up the gym full time for the professional fighters. I got a we, we got a small team together of the people that were gonna help me for the fight, and we just trained every single day and just um, just in case. And they offered me to chase super fight months before the fight actually happened. But then, it, like, it fell through. Then they almost offered me a one-day notice fight. A what? <laughs> yeah, while I was eating dinner. <laughs> and then they said, "Oh, never mind." And never then, mind. and then, um, then they finally gave me the Chase Super fight, so I, I continued preparing for that fight. But other than that, the camp went well. The training sessions went well. Um, mentally, I was in a. Honestly, I had a chip on my shoulder. Yeah. Mentally, going into this fight, going into this training camp, I can't say that it helped me. Um, to be a little bit more stressed out, I don't think it did. But um, <laughs> overall, the work that we put in, the physical work that we put in, was solid, and we went in there and implemented that game plan, and I was able to keep sound mind during the fight. You definitely did. You definitely did. And I was, uh, I was watching. I was paying attention. What, what were you uh, expecting uh, from, from, from Chase uh, for this fight? What, 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 what did you think? Were there any uh, surprises thrown at you? Was there anything that you didn't think uh, would happen and did? Not at all. Um, everything that he tried to do, that's exactly what we were expecting him to do. You know, we knew that he didn't have nothing for us on the feet. Mm. So we knew he was going to try and take us down. Yeah. As much as possible, he was going to pressure, not out of um, controlling the distance or controlling the octagon itself, but he was going to pressure just out of desperation. I need to close the distance before I get hit again and try and take this guy down and to take his back and he'll look for a submission in the first round there was i believe and correct me if i'm mistaken uh an uppercut that you throw through that dropped him um dropped him in the first round it what? was like a it was like a it was kind of like a check jab okay like i stepped okay. out and gotcha and threw the jab in and as he was coming in with the cross i believe so what was your uh mental game plan when when he dropped it and you stepped back as opposed to you know trying to finish well, we know that he could take damage, mm. and we've seen in his previous fights with the UFC that he'll get hit hard, sometimes dropped, sometimes rattled, mm. and then ends up, you know, grappling this guy and beating him on the floor, yeah. getting the other guy tired, and then submitting him or finishing him. So, like, we just didn't want to be that guy. Like, oh, shit, we're winning, and then we fall into a trap. So I think um, one of the biggest things for me, as well as in my career, evolving and getting better was to be more patient mm. you know not just run over the steps or run through the steps and at the same time i have to admit i like i said i had a chip on my shoulder yeah. i didn't want the fight to end i felt like there was a couple times in the fight where i could have just went and finished it but i wanted to um especially make a statement like no we're gonna stay here for the full 15 minutes Hell yeah. and i'm gonna control these full 15 minutes i'm gonna let you catch your breath i hit him in the body a couple of times he was breathing hard i stepped yeah. back let him catch his breath and then i'm gonna go do it again um, I didn't have nothing against them, but it was just um, kind of just shaking off frustrations, I guess, from the and camp it, and shit. And you could, and you could or almost, sport. you could almost, yeah, and you could almost see that in the fight, just in the way that you move. Um, 
And and the one thing that did come to mind uh, when I was watching you fight was Bruce Leroy. You were moving like water. Um, how'd you, uh, how did that come to be? When did you start um, with your, uh, your likeness for Bruce Lee? Like, how'd that come about? Well, I started liking Bruce Lee from back in the day. I remember when I got, in, when I got like, bullied for the first time my father that was like one of the first movies he started showing us like the bruce lee series and whatnot and i fell in love with martial arts at then and i and bruce lee you know he became an idol to me um especially his philosophies but uh i i would have to say like the movement came with um i guess the way that i understood martial arts i guess people understand it differently when they get into it they don't really get into it as martial arts especially nowadays they get into it as a as an athletic endeavor mm. as an athlete as a sport and which is which is true we do have to have that aspect about us we definitely have to be athletes and sportsesians to a certain extent but martial arts comes with a whole another baggage you know a load of baggage oh yeah that's why it's um different from um football or basketball there's yeah, yeah, yeah. you know there's <laughs> people think that oh well we're just athletes and yeah there's a lot of dumb strong athletes out there yeah, but there for are. the most part martial artists have a different understanding of life in general and we can't just judge how would you say fishes on their ability to climb a tree how well they can swim that's in that fact. sense and that's what we do that's what we tend to do in society so um one second let me grab a little water get that hydration that h2o up you know yeah. get it right get it right get it tight <laughs> but um i think that's a i think that's a major a misconception that we have it is highly cerebral you have to constantly think and not only think, but think on a dime. Yeah. So the minute you think it, you got to do it. Like there is no hesitation and you got to almost be for sure in your actions, like not predicting, but deciding so quickly that it looks like anticipation. Yeah. And you know, it's very difficult to do. And a lot of people um, misjudge that. Um, but the they reason, downplay it. Yeah. The reason why people still get tired after training like an athlete for, I don't know how many months and 15 minutes is because the nervous system's like a muscle. Yeah. The more you have that nervous system jumping all the time, you know, no matter what, no matter how strong you are, you're going to wear your body out. You're going to wear that that um, synapsis basically out. You're going to those decision making um, intervals are going to be longer and longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that go on with fights, you know, people that get faked out a lot. Yeah. You see Mayweather do it to a lot of people. Then all of a sudden their their um, their reactions become slower, you know, and then that's when he finds his opening. Yeah. Did <clears throat> did the age pl the. Um the age difference have a, a role to play uh, at least for you or no 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 i don't i don't look at it i never look at any physical attribute you don't look at stats anything nothing like that no to, you're another person you know you're Facts. in there with me and like honestly like i haven't met win or lose i haven't met anybody that's like run me over or beat mm. the crap out of me you know what i'm saying i walk out of fights that i lost looking the same as if i go and win so God, this is brain power it's not just yeah. yeah not just physical how much would you say that uh getting getting prepared for a fight of that caliber um how much would you say is a, a mental battle compared to the physical i feel like it's all mental i mean f training physically is easy there's a lot of people there's a lot of fucking mm. i'm sorry like low lives and shit that can get in fucking great shape you know yeah. what i'm saying and they, can, <laughs> they can do some crazy shit but i mean to be in a fight and to want to be there and to go to go through that grind and then get knocked down and then get back up and want to keep doing it that's a whole other animal entirely that that takes a whole other type of discipline you have to train your mind into that like you have to not like pain but embrace it you know what i'm saying well we were, we were even talking about how um you know early on um in the ultimate fighter and even to this day um you're known for smiling mid-fight and is that is that to match the Bruce Leroy persona persona or is that because you genuinely enjoy what you're doing in there? Well, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy what I I don't know. I sometimes and I don't know, like fighting is awkward sometimes. Man. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, some yeah. some shit happens during <laughs> like, the fight <laughs> and it's fucking funny. Like yeah. and I'm sorry, like it makes face. you want to smile. Like Yeah. Yo. Just punch you in the face. Uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got like, you. Oh yeah, you like like I mean we do it in sparring. Yeah. You know, like yeah. when, when we're sparring and somebody gets you good, the guy will smile at you, maybe you didn't joke around, like but at that point I feel like it's such a personal thing that you're not a stranger to me. You know, yeah. it's not it's not it's not, not okay for me to joke around with you right now. 
because we're doing something that's very, very personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had times where I collided shins with a guy and I looked at him I'm like, yeah, that fucking hurt, you know, and I'm smiling. <laughs> he was like, well, I'm not gonna deny it. Like, yeah. like I know it hurt you too. And like us mm -hmm. trying to overact like, yeah. like, like fucking tough guys is, is BS right now. Yeah. We're both in here. It's like that hurt, right? Yeah, yeah there's yeah, no, yeah, let's, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is, uh, you're also known for, uh, you know, being a, a vegan. Um, Tell me about that. How, how'd you get into that? Um, I know it's been, is it going for 10 years now? Oh, eight years, I would say. Eight years? Um, okay. Yeah, I think they got it mixed up. I'm okay, because I heard, yeah. I'm in the UFC for 10 years, and I was a vegan for eight years. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so how, how'd that come about? Um, have there been any nights that you're like, Ugh, I'm itching for, you know, whatever the case? Well, see, like, now, I've, this is great, you know? I, a lot of vegans don't like these questions, and a lot of vegans don't like to talk about this because they're, like, just just explaining themselves, but I don't mind over explaining myself. I don't give a fuck about that kind of shit, mm. but it's, it's always good to clear the air, you know, Please. because a lot of people think that, mm -hmm. oh man, um, it's not the natural way or you must be missing something and whatnot. Craig now, is vegan as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So he knows, he's gonna know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly what's going on. See now, like everything that we do, even greatness, and I love that quote, greatness is not something you achieve or do, greatness is something you habitually do. So it's, mm. a, it's, it's a habit, you know, it's almost an addiction. Mm -hmm. So anything, and I feel like anything and everything is habitual. You are what you habitually do. The only reason that we're comfortable with eating meat is because we didn't have a choice in it. Mm. The minute that we were babies or little kids, they, they, they fed it to you in your mouth. I guarantee you, if you knew exactly what the fuck that shit was <laughs> like when you were a kid. This is food. You, yeah, like, oh, that's a baby cow. Nah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't show you that part. Yeah. You, you would, uh, uh, like, like um, there, there's a good quote that this um, vegan guy, he says, he's like, yeah, if you put a rabbit and an apple inside of a crib of a baby, let me know when the baby eats the rabbit and plays with the apple you know like they automatically know what they're going to eat and, and what they're going for and if we want to go to the physiology about it um he, the reason why we can see color just like the every animal that can see color is the so that we can see ripe fruit growing off of the trees mm. all predators they all see black and white but they're better suited for seeing movement for tracking mm. down their prey mm. you know what i'm saying and not only that they can eat that shit with their bare hands and mouth yeah we can't do that shit yeah, up i true. can't tear into a hide now <laughs> And like, that's true. but there's so many, there's so many instances like the lady that ordered fried chicken. She knows she was eating chicken, but mm -hmm. the fact that she found the chicken head in it, she was disgusted. Yeah. Because there was a chicken. Oh, that's where it crossed the line. She's like, <laughs> she, and she was like, oh no, she. But like, she, it was funny. She said like, I didn't know it was chicken. Like chicken, chicken, like chicken, chicken. What the fuck you think it is though? What? Like, From like, a bone. You know, but but that's but that's cognitive disassociation with yeah. the reality of things because we're not taking responsibility for the animal's life when we want to ingest it. Now, like the Native Americans and other Native tribes and indigenous people that do hunt. Mm. but only take from the forest what they need, mm -hmm. they have a higher respect for other life mm -hmm. because they actually have to prepare it, take it, take its life, you know, um, bleed it out and use every single part of the animal. Use every and I, single part of the animal. Yeah. And I think that's what's missing with people that say that, oh, well, we're hunters and we want to eat meat. Like, don't get me wrong. I know I can do it if I need to for, for survival. I just prefer not to do that kind if of If I had shit. an option, yeah. Yeah, I if I had an not. option, I, I would climb a tree and eat apples. Maybe, yeah, you know, yeah. Say, like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. It's, <laughs> A lot easier and I love apples. Was there um But there was a transition period. Was there but was there like a video that you saw? Was there something that was like boom, I'm a vegan, fuck this life? Oh well first the the, fr the first reason was because uh, my manager suggested that I move down to 135. Holy shit. So um I said let me try it. So I um cut my hair and uh, <laughs> He's like, that's seven pounds right there, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I went completely plant based and um for I would say like a year and a half, I was going on and off. It was a very difficult transition, especially when I was doing it, what, eight years ago. Yeah. It was, uh, they didn't have all these vegan fucking burgers or cheeses or yeah. like yeah. all these like things that can help hard. you transition. Like you I a went, Burger King, you can get a, a vegan burger now, bro. Like, yeah, I was just eating straight like vegetables. Like, like, like and, and like, um, and the, the hard part was it wasn't so much what I was eating. I was eating whatever I wanted. I, ate, I felt like I was feeling good about it, but it's mental. You know, the, everybody around you mm -hmm. is going in one direction. And then not only that, get yeah. so concerned about you when you're doing something that's not what, different, like, yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah. different. Yeah. Like, it's like, well, you maybe sure I am wrong. wrong. You know, yeah. you start second guessing yourself. Yeah. And bro, I, I second guess myself to ne nearly being sick. 
Wow. You know what I'm saying? To where, you know, I had to have a little bit more fucking in me. And then I was just like, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, let me just, let me just make sure that I'm going to do this right. And, um, start doing it. And now it, it is, I don't even pay second mind to it. I don't have any type of cravings whatsoever. If anything, no? the smell of it disgusts me. Wow. Like I can smell the, the rotting in it, you know, wow. even when it's being cooked and I just can't stand it. Like, I just know it's not for me. I feel much better. I cleared up, um, uh, sunspots that I had all over my body. Mm. My hair used to be just straight, like, like, just like, like, like straight padded nap. You know what I'm saying? Now it, I don't do nothing to it. It just falls and like Damn. it's curled. I, that helps with the water too that I'm drinking and everything. Mm -hmm. But that's natural swag right there for mm -hmm. those who don't know. My eyes got better. Yeah. You know, like, like I went to the eye doctor. My eyes went from 2019 to 2020 now. Mm -hmm. Damn. I mean, 2020 to 2019. I think it's better if it's lower. Uh, slightly, yeah. um, <laughs> slightly lower but damn i feel um, like everything just is working out man i recover faster i don't stay sore um it's easy for me to be genuinely happy with myself you know genuinely happy not content with making people feel comfortable but then okay so question how does um you were talking about uh early on it, it could have been a little bit harder um you know because people could be judgmental w did you have those situations where you were at restaurants and you know you were asking for salads or well, you know what was that like oh yeah man like it's like it felt like um just um just catering to me at all it felt like every time i asked for something like it's like like, like, like paying the ass <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like i'm like i'm being, being bougie as fuck i'm like, I'm like this nigga eat damn, rabbit food. i just want an apple like that's all like, it's like, this nigga eat rabbit food <laughs> like, like, come but, on but bro. it's just like i don't know it's just i i've been in the service industry before and you know okay. and like when the customer asks me ask me anything and sometimes there's some ridiculous fucking requests yeah yeah you know but I take it with a smile and I do exactly what because that's what I'm doing on my, on my job at the moment. The same way that I feel like in the UFC, we're there to entertain people, you know, so I oh, try yeah. to put on entertaining fights, you know, I don't want to just um, grind somebody out for like 15 minutes so that I can just pick up a W, you know, I'm yeah. going to do the stuff that people like to see. Yeah. And well, if you didn't, you, you wouldn't be in here for 10 years, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. that's a damn fact. Um, what, how, how does um, the vegan lifestyle play into your weight cutting? Is it more difficult? Is it easier? Talk to me about that. And what about uh, gaining weight? Well, that's the well, that's the funny thing. You know, like I did first lose a lot of weight, um, and I got down to one thirty five, and I was there for like two years. And then after being vegan, I, I, you're just putting lean mass on, so. I actually gained weight and I couldn't cut down to 35 anymore, so I actually moved up to 145. Mm. And that's why I'm fighting at 145 now. But the weight cut's easy. I usually walk in the week of like close to 160. Wow. And um, it's the last day, really, that I don't... I still eat breakfast in the last day and I just don't eat lunch or dinner. And I still train. I train every single day, just normal training. And no sweats, no sauna. Don't don't have to try and sweat it out. And I just cut it off like that, and it's mm -hmm. easy. Do you feel more comfortable at thirty five or forty five? Forty five for sure. Yeah. Were you feeling like um, not weak, but were you feeling almost like? How would you feel at thirty five? Um, definitely, I was bigger than guys there, but yeah. I, de I I felt like I took hits not as well. Mm. You know, being drained like that, I felt like the hits hurt more. Um, and then it got to, it just got to a point where I wasn't mentally functioning at an optimal level, you know, like cutting that much weight just makes you overly aggressive and you know, you're just not in a good place, you know, yeah. it, it sucks, you know, like yeah. anybody to... says anything, boy, snap real quick. People get mad when they're hungry. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and also I just, the way I looked at it, eventually I started looking at it that way and maybe because I was, I started being vegan for a while, you know, and it, it started off just for health and um, nutritional issues, but then it became really ethical after I learned more about it and me just thinking about it. And there was a thought that was prevalent to me that Every, anybody that really cuts weight, including me when I was cutting weight, I, we're just thinking in a in a Goliath bully mentality. I want to be the bigger guy so that I can win. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I want to I want to guarantee my victory, so I want to fight smaller people because they're weaker than me. So I, I just didn't want to put myself in that mentality anymore. Yeah. I'd rather be the smaller guy and oh, still yeah. beat these guys, you know, and still eat a diet that they considered um, is for only for weaklings or you know hippies and shit, mm -hmm. and still do it to them. Hell yeah! So it's just a, I feel like the uphill battle is a lot more honorable than oh, just yeah. stepping on you yeah. know peasants or whatnot. I guess you, you know? prefer being the uh, the underdog. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, I don't. I don't really mind it. Really, I, I I don't think about it at all. I don't watch the sport. I don't watch sports at all. I can't get into it. So, I don't. You don't, even know you don't how watch fights? Works. No, I don't. I don't even know how that betting stuff works. But I know that I'm the underdog usually. Um, I know that I have an attitude sometimes that the majority of people just don't like or feel like I'm full of shit or that I don't necessarily live my life in this fashion or that um. I care more than I let on. They think mm. you sneaking steaks, steaks and shit. Like, <laughs> probably, I don't know. He said he's vegan, but I don't know. Slim Jim. <laughs> um, what do you have a when you when you go into a, a weigh in? What's your mindset? Are you um, do you kind of just want to stand there and get it over with? Are you uh, are you annoyed if the other guy is kind of you know trying to act hard? What's your mindset like? Um, I'm just excited down. because there's um, one. I after we stare down, I get to drink and eat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hell yeah! Boy. I mean, that's, that's the first it. excitement, and it's just one day left. Like that's it. Everything's over with. All the you know hype and all the fancy shits over with. Now it's just a fight, and I think that's the excitement there. I'm usually excited in weigh-ins. Um, I you, forget everything. I don't even remember being hungry. You know and, what I really want to know? How does it feel to punch somebody in the face that hard? <laughs> and get away with it over and over again. Like you know, you coming in here and get away with it <laughs> to 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 fuck people up. I was like job title, right? That, that's a hell of a like. You know what I mean? Like, it's fun. It, no, it's you fun. Want some warrior type shit. Yeah, it's fun. I definitely enjoy the what I do. Um, but about How does like it feel to like connect like really like just <laughs> like there's. Cause no, I watch your fights and it's like yo, you you fucking people up. But in in those moments, like. There is no, there, there's no mind. There's no like bias. Yeah. There's no mm -hmm. leaning towards one way or the other. There's no like I'm good or evil. It's yeah. like a, it's not. There's no anger. It's just like I'm just doing it. Like it just, to, I don't know. It's just, it feels weird at that moment when you're like fighting, or at least for me. Well, so that's I feel like it's like an outer sometimes. body experience. That's like, why you yeah. smile because you're yeah. laughing at the situation. Yeah. Like, now I just punch this guy in the face. Like, yeah. Well, like sometimes <laughs> it's funny, and then like not only that, I'm enjoying it. Sometimes the guy hits me, and then it's like. You know, you realize that, oh, man, shit, this guy has nothing for me. And then you, like, you smile about it sometimes or it's sometimes a good hit. And you're like, oh, and you respect it. Like, oh, that was a fucking good shot. Yeah. You know, like. How do you find yeah, that balance man. of when you're, you're um, you know, you're crazy. dominating a fight and you don't, you know, because we've seen it before where people have been dominating a fight. And then, you know, third round, late, late, uh, third round, they get caught by a submission or something. Mm. They got too cocky. How do you find that fine line? Well. Um, it's something that I've been looking for for a very long time, that, <laughs> you know, but it's something that I know that I'm capable of. And but it's just like I'm not worried about what anybody else thinks anymore, I guess, mm. like not even my corners or my coaches or my teammates. Or like everybody tries to give you last minute advice, what to do for the fight and how to beat this guy and shit like that. But in all honesty, I got to be honest with you, I don't necessarily want the fight to end that fast. You if it, it does, if it does, it does. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I like fighting. So I'm once I'm in there, if if it I'll try and end it for sure. But once I'm in there, I'm not trying to get it over with. This guy's playing a video game. Yeah, <laughs> with, with <laughs> children. <laughs> with He's children. playing Mortal Kombat with children. <laughs> um, <laughs> like ah, we just gonna let him get a couple taps off. Yeah, like, we gotta get back in. Would you prefer um, the 15 minute or 25? I like the 25 minute fights. Um, for real, you're not gassed by 20 by the 20th. I feel like we all get tired as just um like it's like when you're playing a game that you like to play you know and you're tired but you you, you can still push it because you're having fun yeah that's the way that i feel about it like i want to be in there i want to i like to fight if it ends it ends i understand it if i finish you something i'll look for the finish just because it's a part of the skill set yeah. but if i don't i have no it's not like i'm not just trying to make it go away i feel like every fighter that gets in there they just want it to be over with already it's, mm. it's a stressful situation for them no for me it's where i go to relax yeah. because like i feel like society itself for warriors especially that do this kind of shit is a stressful fucking environment you know like you can't even for men just in general it's hard to be a man yeah. these days bro yeah, like yeah. some motherfucker Preach. fucks you on the street you try to do something about it he can like call the cops on you and you yeah. get arrested you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. somebody walks by and grabs your girl's ass you know what i'm saying <laughs> you beat the guy's ass you get arrested for fucking the guy and like it's so hard to find um I mean, proper masculinity 
you okay. know, in this day and age because we live in such a very nerfed out society. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. everything is like, oh, man, don't bully me and don't do this. No. How about you just like Bruce Lee said, you know, don't pray for an easy life. Just pray for the ability to endure a hard one. You know, we have to try and Bruce work Lee quotes, baby. I fucking love it. But I, yeah, ultimately, it's taking responsibility for yourself, and I think that's what what makes it difficult for people that artists mm -hmm. in general m molding with society. You know, artists in general want to try and express themselves wholeheartedly and fully to the furthest extent. They want to see how far or how bright their light can shine, whereas society kind of says, "Hey, just kind of put that away because you're making people feel uncomfortable about it." And it sucks, man, because then we're, we're brought up almost like fucked up in the head. You know, when mm, we're kids, we're wild, yeah. untamed, we're undomesticated. And the first thing that we start, the minute we start being ourselves, they start cracking down the whip and yeah. start trying to put you in a straight jacket, basically. And like, yeah. hold up, no, cut your hair, do this, do this, dress this way, do this, hang out with this kid, don't hang out with this kid, yeah. act this way. That's not good behavior, you know what I'm saying? No, that's not reality or that's not realistic. I think we got to stop fucking each other up, yeah. you know, like, and it's <laughs> funny you say making other people uncomfortable because it was never our job in the first place to make people comfortable, you know, like, no, one's yeah. obligated to, no, we, yeah, we have no obligation to nobody's comfortability. No. And if someone finds themselves uncomfortable around you, that motherfucker can just walk the fuck away. Yeah, he's just know? insecure. Like, he's just insecure on himself. Um, have you ever had anybody try to um, kind of like derail you from the Bruce Leroy way as far as like, you know, your, your swagger, your, your on, on the canvases for, you know, your, just your general demeanor, your smile. Has anybody tried to tell you like, Hey, maybe you should take a more, um, a different approach. Well, definitely. I feel like that's every day. Oh, that's, wow. That's not, um, it doesn't stop, you know, wow. like, um, I, I feel like that, especially within your personal life, even within your friends and family, you know, and, and whatnot, it's, I feel like that's where it's the most prevalent, you know? Mm. And, you know, like, um, for, for instance, for veganism, you know, it's just, that's every day. That's an every <laughs> fucking thing. Like, I can go on Instagram, you know, I'll find like six comments of like, your diet's missing like 16 nutrients. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, oh, you're, you're sick and you're unhealthy. I'm like, fuck, man, I guess I'll just die then. You bro, know, I, I, don't know what else to do, bro, I literally <laughs> just whooped somebody's ass. How sick am I? <laughs> <laughs> that's wild to me, though. But uh, I, yeah, go ahead. No, go um, as far as your, you talked about your, um, your corner, your coaches a bit. Um, what were they, um, what were they giving you advice on? What were they telling you in between rounds for this last fight? Now, I don't want to sound like a dick to my corners and everybody, but quite honestly, I was just thinking about catching my breath and drinking water. Oh yeah. I did not hear a you word that they said. Wow. <laughs> um, I've heard, um, while I'm in the fight, like how much time there is left. I heard that, and I heard one of my corners just say, don't hug him, you know, because <laughs> we were going to, like, tap hands and yeah, yeah. not to hug him. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. I don't, I didn't really hear too much yeah. from the corner. I was just nodding my head so they didn't give me the water. Because <laughs> <laughs> you only got, what is it, a 30-second uh, break? Well, a minute. minute? Yeah, 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 but it, it feels like 10 seconds, yeah. Yeah, it goes by pretty quick. Um, I heard they were speaking Spanish. How uh, how long have you uh, been speaking Spanish? How long have you been fluent or not fluent? Are you fluent in the language? Well, I I can speak to get by. You know, um, grammatically, I can I'll, I'll make a whole bunch of errors. Okay. But um, my father's Cuban and my mother's Dominican. So okay. Um, I am of Hispanic heritage. Okay, dope. Or Latino heritage, whatever we like to call it, and <laughs> <laughs> right. But you know, um, these yeah that's a so i i heard spanish my whole life i understand spanish perfectly it's just i'm speaking it i do want to get better at it but it's something that i didn't have a lot of practice in growing up in uh, america yeah for those who don't know um where are you fighting out of and how long have you been there um i'm fighting out of freedom fighters mm. and we weren't always freedom fighters um and at first it was just me and manolo okay for for a while but i've been trained i that's where i started basically so around the age of 15 i've been training with master manolo wow up until now um speaking about when you were 15 or so um why don't you tell us a little a little bit about your experience in the ultimate fighter um how did you get on the show um yeah how how that come about well um we were trying to actually get into the wec and so i was um I beat a guy from ATT. His name was Jamal McClellan. And I guess they were like scouting him for the WEC. Mm. And I guess it was like out of that fight between me and him. 
to see who would like get a contract or whatnot. Wow. But I never seen the contract, but I did beat him. Um, and just during that whole wait period, my brother, um, I didn't even know like this existed. You know, I wasn't really like I, I I'm never I'm never into the sports. I was just yeah. doing whatever fights they were giving me. And at the time, you still weren't watching fights, right? No. <laughs> And my That's brother just said, um, they're having Ultimate Fighter tryouts in North Carolina. And my dad was staying out in North Carolina at that time. So he says, oh, let's just drive up to North Carolina and try out for the tryouts. And yeah. I just tried out. And Was there a lot of people? Yeah, there was a whole bunch of people. And uh, I think it was also Tony Ferguson was there, if I'm not mistaken. Holy was shit. Was he there? Because it was a 155 wow. um, Ultimate Fighter show. And they just liked me and... Um, I waited like two months after the tryouts and they called me up and flew me out to Vegas. Wow. Um, and for those who don't know, uh, the ultimate fighter is kind of a show that they used to have on spike. And then I believe they, where'd they go afterwards? I forgot where they went afterwards. Um, but, uh, basically it was a room with 16 fighters, if I'm not mistaken, after the pre, the preliminary yeah, yeah, uh, eliminations. Um, and they're normally coached by two, um, to legends of the sport um ufc fighters and then you know they're they live in the house together um for how long were you guys there for we were there for i think it was six weeks wow for six yeah. weeks um just living living with each other and then training pretty much every day um kind of elimination round sort of style until you have uh crowned a winner um how was the actual experience living in the house um uh, I, to me, I guess it felt kind of like I never been to camp, but I guess that's what camp would feel like. Yeah, you yeah. couldn't have phones or anything, right? No, we couldn't have phones. Six weeks without phone, living in a house with like sixteen dudes. No, <laughs> like, no I, need, I need a book. He's like, I'm a pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of stuff to do, but they everything that they wanted you to do wanted to be interactive. Like you couldn't bring books to even to read. They didn't want wow, you. Wow, bro. Yeah, they didn't want you in your own headspace. They wanted you just. To getting into shit you know drink drink and yeah. fight with each other yeah. <laughs> that's what they want they supplied all the liquor for free yeah. everything was for free all no for books free. but we got liquor yeah <laughs> trauma that's crazy <laughs> um and overall would you say it was a positive experience do you still talk to some of the guys that um yeah i do i do um uh, i still talk to some of the guys from the show um i think it was a very positive experience it was definitely a huge eye-opener yeah you know being able to train because my coach was george st pierre so yeah being able to train with him and his squad like just being able to see how not only professional but a champion the way he likes to train and do things and carries himself was a huge eye-opener for me and um definitely helped me with my career for sure yeah, yeah. i wouldn't be out of i wouldn't feel like i would have been a ufc fighter if i didn't have that experience you know yeah um he seems very humble uh gsp oh yeah for sure no he's very humble um character he's a very funny character too <laughs> but yeah he never um yeah when he was on the show he, he he never really even coached us he just says like he was like he just gave it up to his coach he's like look i wouldn't be a very good coaching um i don't want to be a very good coach i think i'll be better suited for you if i if i just remain your training partners and i'll let my coach coach you while he's coaching me for this fight and wow that's what we did and he was just a very excellent training partner like you never feel in danger with him like he knows how to flow um through all the moves and everything um you can go hard he can fuck you up you know <laughs> oh saying? yeah like, i never pee <laughs> it, it felt more like work rather than like we're, we're we're competing yeah you know could you tell um when you're training whether it be at uh, the ultimate fighter or when you're training uh in general can you tell him immediately who doesn't want it um yeah but i there's levels to it elaborate there's levels to it so that there's definitely people that don't want it mm. that like the idea of being a fighter i like know? the idea of a belt <laughs> <laughs> well, they, like, they, they, they like being able to say that they're a fighter uh -huh. and get that like small clout whatever there's there's a lot of people like that that don't really want it okay you know what i'm saying there's people that kind of want it um but refuse to change the things that they're doing mm. to actually start um going for it and then there's people that are just confused you know that don't know if they really want it or not because what they're doing and, and essentially is the same thing they don't really know if they're what they're doing is working mm -hmm. but you can't continue to do the same thing expecting different results you know it's mm -hmm. the definition of insanity. insanity if you want something you never had 
you got to do shit you never done before and it's usually you can pick somebody's brain that's been there before you know what i'm saying or that or that has gone through it i think that's one thing that made me very successful is that i didn't when it came to that like i'm confident in myself and i'm gonna have an ego if we're going at it you know what i'm saying that's i think you, i think you should have to if you're fighting somebody you gotta have like fuck you i'm not gonna go to you like i'm gonna mm, beat your hell ass, yeah you, know? you gotta have some of that but when it comes down to training i accept lessons advice from almost nearly everybody doesn't necessarily mean i implement it into my game plan but i i want to hear what you got to say and not only that i definitely pick the brains of the people that are more successful than me or i feel like are in the places that i want to be in later mm. you know so and i de and i have no bias towards it because I have to be honest with myself at that point. Okay, I want to be at his point. I'm not at that point right now So I obviously don't know what the fuck I'm doing to get there So let me pick this guy's brain to really understand it. I think a lot of people's egos get in their way They want to be successful, but there's so much up their own ass and there's so much in the lifestyle that I'm gonna do me YOLO You know, <laughs> no, I don't need nobody. It's just gonna be about me and my grind you know that they don't allow themselves to open up enough to receive any type of help to get better because we can't do it independently independent is good but in order to grow and to last long you need to have interdependency so we have to rely on each other and take responsibility for each other for instance if i don't show up every day to training i'm not only doing myself a disservice but i'm doing my teammates that need me to train with them a disservice and that's what some people don't fucking understand i want to make it but i'm only going to train for my fights well then you're not only going to get better one way and then you're going to find it's not going to be enough when you get to the big shows damn dropping knowledge dropping knowledge um <clears throat> what what do you think is something that um today uh june 14th 2020 bruce leroy um What's a, uh, maybe like a life lesson or what's something you wish you would have known when you were starting out, when you were ultimate fighter, what's something that, you know, June 14th, Bruce Leroy could tell, uh, ultimate fighter, Bruce Leroy. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's simple, man. Um, I feel like for me, especially what made the huge difference is really just believe in yourself, mm. you know, at the end of the day, I feel everybody inside knows what's right and what's wrong. If we can have enough empathy to put ourselves in the shoes of every single being that is around us when we're making or completing an action, you know, and then we can truly judge ourselves and be like, is this the correct or just action for everybody? Is my freedom ending where yours begin or is it encroaching on your freedom as well? You know, we really have to ask ourselves that we cannot be satisfied if we're fucking with other people's lives. Oh, yeah. Which is why we got to keep fucking with other people's lives when we start doing that shit, you know, <laughs> like motherfuckers that live in drama need to oh, yeah. be more dramatic need oh, motherfuckers. Yeah. So it's just yeah. misery needs company. Yeah. So we just have to, um, I wouldn't say like, like mind your own business in that sense, but, <laughs> but take responsibility for our own lives. Yeah, yeah. You know, the person that wastes the most time climbing the mountain is the person running around the base of the mountain saying everybody's going up the wrong way. Everybody's gonna yep. get up there, man. Damn. Yep. Yo, so you said you're, cause I, I want to know how this came to be. Your dad's Cuban, your mom's Dominican, right? <laughs> my yeah, my my father's Dominican. So how was it, growing up in a Hispanic household, telling your mom, "Hey, listen, I want to fight." Like, what was her reaction? Oh to my that? god! <laughs> Especially being now Dominican. that I think about it, that's I need so to know true. This. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they none of them agreed with it at all. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. she, was, she was probably the first one that he was fighting because Dominican moms <laughs> don't play. So that's probably where he yeah. learned his first. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Oh, my God. <laughs> at what point um, did you kind of get... A, at what point did you, for yourself, figure out, okay, this isn't a game. This isn't a little, you know, backyard school fight or whatever. This is what I want to do. Well, at what point was it that serious? And at what point did you ever, like... Uh, talk to your parents and be like, hey, this isn't a phase. Well, when I was doing the backyard fights, I felt like I was already, like, I already had my mind made up. You know, that's what I wanted to do. I had my mind up, made up before then. Um, I began to, like, like, let school kind of run its course, mm. you know, while I was there and just focus. I was really focused on one thing. Even, um, they, I know a lot of people didn't understand. You know, um, they saw me pouring everything that I had into wrestling practice or into martial arts practice after school. 
and they saw me kind of leaving the other things alone. Yeah. But I just already knew that if I do this right now, you know, I, I can be successful later on. But I really got to spend all my time and energy in it because at a very young age, I just knew that school doesn't have a proper way of helping ki children excel in the things that they're good at. Mm. You know, we shouldn't have a society of, you know, uh, a whole bunch of mediocre people. Mm. Why not have a society of a whole bunch of specialists, mm. you know, in different things? Like there's gonna be kids that automatically or naturally excel in mathematics. Then instead of giving them more um, mm -hmm. history courses or language arts yeah, courses yeah, yeah. and frustrate the shit out of them until they burn out, <laughs> give them the shit that they like and then you can give them that other shit sparingly enough to go through society because yeah. not everybody's going to use trigonometry. Most motherfuckers are going to just need basic math to count their fucking change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but other than that, they're not going to be doing some crazy mathematics. Give that to the motherfucker that wants to do it. And mm -hmm. the person that wants to read and write poetry or write books or teach kids, you know what I'm saying? Help them excel in those things. If they want to be musicians, you know, help them excel in those things. But I think we have a very fucked up way of like, well, I don't think it's well, for them, for the companies that run the country and shit. It's not fucked up for them. They're training yeah. people to be um, mm -hmm. just day to day good, workers, good workers. Yeah. yeah. You know, like come at this hour and leave at this hour. Nine after to doing, five. Yeah. yeah. Nine to five. Mm -hmm. Don't retain any information. Just be smart enough to complete the task and go home and come back and do it again. Yeah. And they're not doing anything new. It's yeah. just repetitive. It's just yeah. doing the same well, thing. The history they're still teaching us is, 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 a, is a, is a whole bunch of, thank God for the internet. Like, mm -hmm. it's like Christopher, <laughs> still talking about Christopher Columbus. Columbus coming over here and like giving niggas presents and shit, yeah, you know, yeah. the present, <laughs> a knife in the back. Was Here's the fucking, an iPad. You know, like, <laughs> <For> <laughs> everybody knows that shit didn't happen, but whatever. But like, so it's not about educating us. And I, I know it's not about educating us. It's about domesticating people. And if we're in the process of educating people, it's in the term. You, when you're educating somebody, you don't give them knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's not the term for educa education. Education is an irrigation term. Mm -hmm. It's to draw forth water. You know what I'm saying? So the knowledge is already inside of you. We are already going to be um, geniuses in what we want to do. Mm -hmm. But somebody has to guide us and draw forth that water that's already inside of us. And I think that's um, the proper form of education. If we educate the knowledge from people, then they will be specialists in whatever they want to do, rather than just throw on pieces of clay to a sculpture um, so that it can look the same as everybody else. Just everybody yeah. just be a, just a block of marble rather than a masterpiece. Wow, that's yeah. absolutely beautiful. Uh, what was your personal experience in, in school? Like, did you, um, did you find solace in any subjects at all, or was it not really? Well, yeah, um, I definitely like the performing arts. Um, I love sports, love playing them, and I also love um, creative writing. I actually had a scholarship for creative writing. Oh, shit. I used to love to do poetry and stuff like that, and music. Wow. So, um, those well, we got a studio here, you know what I'm saying? Anytime you want to come through the booth, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's always ready for you. Um, kind of switching lanes a little bit. Um, what is uh when i say you know current current events honestly you can apply to so many things at this point um but as far as the the two most prevalent um subjects going on right now which i think we all know is the corona and the protests what um what's or, what's your what, what's your or your stance have you been affected by either or um did it did it play anything at all against your your bout versus uh chase cooper um well we can get into the whole protest things real quick but For let me sure. let me touch on the corona real quick go ahead so now we gotta understand man for the flu has killed more people mm. you know my wife's a doctor um and not only that, I heard it from many other doctors, nurses even, that they're fabricating death certificates. You think so? Well, yeah. It's no, fucking, it's a fact. It's yeah. a fact. It's a fact. They're, they're, they ain't playing around. They're, 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 people are fact. dying of different shit, you know? like. Yeah. And they're just stapling like, corona. They got yeah. diabetes. Yeah. Nah, that's ironic. Some, some guy got shot and it's like, it was laced. The bullet was laced. With, <laughs> with the corona. <laughs> yeah, them new yeah. cartel members. <laughs> crazy. Boy, that yeah. corona on the bullet. Right. So what I think, what, what I do ultimately believe, and I... I, I feel like I know it for a fact, you know, it's a fear mongering disease. Mm. 
Mm. So they're trying to cause fear. And when you live in a state of fear, it's a lower vibrational frequency. It's easier to be sick. You know, when you're constantly worried about getting sick, it's usually when you get sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When you're paying no mind to it, it doesn't happen. And if it does happen, it lasts a couple of days. It's nothing big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But your mind can literally make you sicker than what you are. Mm -hmm. You know? Love and when you get type shit. And when you're scared, but but it it, it, it manifests in the physical. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're scared, you need to be comforted. So what do you turn to? Comfort foods. Comfort mm. foods lower your immune system. You preach so now it's choir. easier to get sick. You know, everything has a domino effect. When you feel good and you're not scared, you're probably thinking you're, you're freed up more mental space to philosophize about better health. So you probably might be make better choices than eat comfort foods because you don't need the necessity to feel comfortable at the moment because you're not scared of anything mm -hmm. you know and not only that when they scare us and they got us all fucked up like that that's when they can come and tell you some shit like hey we need to take away a little bit more of your rights so that we can keep you safe yeah. and people just buy into it eat Fuck that it. shit up they eat that yeah, shit up they scare. <laughs> so do you think there's a certain uh level of uh, like uh being a hypochondriac that comes with it uh yeah for sure i mean look look at the state of society we live in now man like who the fuck ever needed um hand sanitizer Mm -hmm. It's not healthy for you. Mm -hmm. um, it lowers your immune... It's putting your immune system on a crutch. It's like, okay, I don't need to produce my own antibiotics or antibodies because I'm getting it from the outside. So now mm -hmm. you inhibit yourself from actually making your own because you're you're getting it exogenously. So that now you just won't... You're like, you're like, oh, fuck it. I don't have to make it anymore. Just yeah. the same thing if you eat too much sugar, your insulin, natural insulin pumps stop working. And then mm -hmm. you end up being diabetic. Yeah. You know, because you start putting your body on a crutch when you start eating unnatural things and doesn't let your body actually do the things naturally. Mm. A lot of motherfuckers say, oh, well, when you're a vegan, it takes a lot more nutrients and vitamins to process food because of the plant fiber. But that's what your body's supposed to do. Mm. Your body's supposed to go through the fucking work mm. because there's a whole process to it. And there's a beauty in making a five minute experience into a five hour experience. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why there's a difference between doing DMT and drinking an ayahuasca tea. Bruh. You know what I'm saying? There's a huge Facts. fucking difference. Yeah. But we want everything fast and now. Yeah. The reason why, you know, we get instant fucked. gratification. Yeah, exactly. So um instead of like um processing the food naturally the way we do it, we would rather just get the nutrients already processed through us, usually through another animal. Mm. The man will already process whatever nutrients that you were supposed to get that you're supposed to function on every day with his micronutrients can only be found in plants. Mm -hmm. But we choose to just kind of piggyback and play second in line to the nutrients and the energy which is why we're probably living at, at a low functionality in these days in your vegan lifestyle do you supplement anything not at all nothing i don't supplement a damn thing i mean i smoke weed and if you want to call it god a praise but, god <laughs> but i don't supplement a damn thing i just eat i mostly eat raw fruits and vegetables man i love you know like and i don't restrict myself if oh, food has too much sugar that's not shit, that's yeah. a lie yeah you know what i'm saying not when you're eating with fibers and other vitamins that help you process and break down that sugar and, and make it into long burning energy rather than just short energy because it's not processed white sugar you know and i be seeing his instagram stories yeah he, he has some nice mushrooms in there you know be <laughs> cooking it up bro mm -hmm. he ain't fucking around they be looking real good too <laughs> um uh, as far as uh, before we get into the protests, <clears throat> still dealing with uh, Corona, what was the experience? Was it the first time that you uh, fought with nobody there as far as audience members go? It was. Uh, no, no. I'm the ultimate fighter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yes. Fights, yes. But to me, it doesn't make a difference. You know, um, um, whether it's like a couple people screaming or yelling and a whole bunch of people, it, it turns into white noise after a while. I'm just, just focused like on the the dangerous part of the guy in front of me trying to fuck me up you know like <laughs> i could care less what anybody else is screaming yeah, yeah. i can hear them but it just doesn't but like it, right at that like i said at that moment it's it's almost impersonal like you can yeah. say whatever you want at that moment right now I'm, we're punching each other in the face like for sure the best man's gonna win have you had uh situations where the other person's talking to you mid fight like talking shit? yeah yeah does that does that affect you does do you get more heated or not just mm -hmm. be honest mm -mm. I, to all that stuff, all that stuff, even like their corners talking shit to you and everything. Oh, their corners? Sometimes. Oh, that's fucking childish. <laughs> that's um, You're it's a all, bum. It's all irrelevant. <laughs> it's all irrelevant at that moment. It's like, you can say whatever you want, you know what I'm saying? Like, but unless he does what you're telling him to do or what he says he was going to do, then he's not going to win. Yeah. You know, like at that moment, it just doesn't matter. Like, to, at least for me, you know, you can say whatever you want, do whatever you want, make some fancy movement yeah, or whatnot. Yeah, it's yeah. just, 
okay, we're still fighting. We're though. still fighting. Like, it's just, I didn't stop. You know, like, <laughs> full adrenaline going yeah. for real. How long does the adrenaline stop as soon as the bell rings? Or <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you can see in my post fight interview, I was still like, I like, still pretty fucking pumped and shit. So. No, it stays with you for a while, and I did notice that in my last fight, not this one, but the fight before that when I broke my hand in that in that fight. Oh, yeah. Um, the adrenaline goes away, like, a few hours after. So you can yeah. still use the hand or no? I was throw, throwing it, but Oof. it hurt every time. I was just, like, dead away at that point. <laughs> the adrenaline is more like, um, I got to do this so I don't get fucked up more, mm. but I still feel the pain. Yeah. Like, it doesn't it really block the pain. Like, yeah. I feel like the pain's there. It, it blocks some of the pain for sure because afterwards I had to drink, you know, to fucking yeah. just numb that shit out. <laughs> shit. But you didn't really feel the main... Uh, it, it wasn't too, like, life-changing, the difference between having an audience and not. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, and then as far as, like, getting into um, the riots and, and that sort of thing, um, does that... How's the atmosphere when you're when you're in the arena? Does does that kind of like travel over in there? Um, the few people that are in there, are there any comments about like what's going on in the world, or are we just here to you know do the fight? And it's actually pretty open. Um, a lot of people were talking about it. A lot of people were concerned about it. Um, thinking of, um thinking about different ways like to solve issues like that or solve problems. We, we got into a lot of discussions and conversations about it, actually. Wow. After the fight, I'm assuming? Before and after. Oh, wow. You know, before and after with a lot of the fighters, after the fight with the, with some of the reporters and whatnot. And um, I've been thinking about this for a very long time, actually, because I live in America and I've seen... We're just videotaping it more, you know? I've been personal... I've been personally, like, um, a part of these situations, like like in shitty situations with police officers you know and, no. it's, mm -hmm. and it's just um i know there's a problem mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i live the fucking problem and i know there's ways of solving the problem and i but what i also do know that like, a lot of people don't necessarily want to hear mm. that kind of shit a lot of people are very angry you know and it's okay to be angry you know what i'm saying i'm still angry about a lot of the situations but do i let my anger drive me or control me you know what i'm saying is it going to be my discipline is it going to be something that I'm going to practice and make it a habit? No, I'm going to use it for um, a different purpose. You know, I'm going to get um, mm. rather than just being angry, I rather be active. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it is it you get you do get energetic. Yeah. But rather using that energy to go and you know while out break shit or or get angry, which is understandable. Like I'm saying, I'm not not justifying it. I I think it's justifiable with the shit that we're going through. Yeah. All the fucking time, but. <laughs> There are better ways that, to me, is more dominant, more mm. firm, more masculine, if that. Mm. Because it's kind of, um, this is the way I look at it. And I do a lot of, I, like I said, I like to do a lot of thinking about this stuff and get high and think about this yeah. shit. Hell yeah. Whatever, boy. you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I done a lot of thinking about it. And I know Martin Luther King and I know Malcolm X says something similar about this, but we are not achieving anything throwing tantrums breaking their shit mm. or even our shit mm. you know what i'm saying and then begging the same motherfuckers that are coming into your neighborhoods and beating you over the head with that big ass stick that they got and then you're begging them to change their ways and stop and treat you better Maybe they don't want to change. Maybe they don't want to treat you better. Maybe they don't want to stop mm -hmm. doing that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the point. So know? maybe we got to stop asking them to stop. You know, I'm not saying go out there and hunt them down and beat somebody up or anything, but start taking care and taking responsibility for your own communities. Mm -hmm. I've been allowing a lot of cities in this country, even around the world. Mm. And every demographic, every fucking race, you would say if you want to call them races, you know, or ethnicities, has a Chinatown, little Korea area, little India, mm -hmm. little this, but you don't see a little Africa or you don't see a mm -hmm. or like a black neighborhood or a black owned businesses like that in the same neighborhood supporting each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If we're so concerned about all these things, then let's change the way we're doing it. Stop adopting their ways or their culture or lack thereof as our own and then complaining about it when it doesn't work out for us mm. you know like why why am i gonna go to your house and then feel like i'm treated differently mm -hmm. and then complain about being treated differently at your house 
Well, in reality, yeah, it's fucked up, but it ain't my place. Mm. If I don't feel like getting treated wrongly, then I'm going to take care of my house. Make sure my house, we don't get treated that way and we don't treat people that way. Mm. Because at the same time, I'm not going to accept your ways, but at the same time, I'm not going to stoop down to your level and ever treat you that way either. So we have to show that we're better than that. Let's start investing in our own properties, buying up the land in our own communities, mm -hmm. policing ourselves. And if we're all out to help each other, there shouldn't be a need for policing ourselves. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And if everybody gave each other a helping hand. So are you um, are you pro uh, the funding slash uh, abolishing the police? Um, I feel like we live in a day and age where if we do need police, the police cannot be policing outside of their own neighborhoods. It's got to be people of the community. Okay, gotcha. Because then we know each other. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? When you get a random motherfucker coming to a random neighborhood, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's going to act in a very hostile way because you don't know any of the niggas there. We were talking about that. We were saying mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't have, you know, Officer, you know, f you know, Frank Thomas policing, you know, in Liberty City. You know, you should have a different officer mm -hmm. yeah. or, or, or in, a, in a Hispanic neighborhood. You know, an of Officer Rodriguez is not going to be alarmed by, like, at the same by time. salsa music mm -hmm. at 2 a.m. You mm -hmm. know, they're not going to be like, oh, I have to pull out my gun. No, nah, it's just yeah. Hispanics having fun. And yeah. at the same time, at the very same time, Police officers need better training. Oh, mm. for the people sure. that the e even less like maybe they need less hats because they got they come in they got to do everything. <laughs> less hats, I'm less hats. That. They got to do fucking everything. If somebody's uh, drunk, somebody's homeless, somebody's on drugs, somebody's you know, there's so many different reasons why they'll mm. call police, and that police <laughs> has to do all of those different things. Yeah, but, they but, need but, that but social but, workers to come out with them or something. I don't true know. True that they, they they can definitely have social workers or anything, but I feel like if it was in a community. You know what I'm saying? And everybody is on it. Like, like who's usually the, the policing, like back in the day, the police or the police force or the people that take care of people in the communities? The warriors, the mm -hmm. people that knew how to fight, yeah. the people that were trained, the people that held themselves to a higher standard of honor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like if a fucking common shop owner comes and attacks me, I'm not going to like take out my gun because I know I can handle this guy. Yeah. It's all right. Or if a five foot female is acting crazy, I don't got to tase the bitch or slam her on her fucking head. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's other ways of handling it. And just because I'm sure of myself I can handle it, I understand people can have weapons. But then again, it's not a job. Yeah. It's a duty that you volunteered for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That you took an oath. Like, it's not a job. So you're like firefighters. You never see firefighters. Well, I, I don't feel like going into that fire today. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, fuck that fire, bro. Oh, I got burned last yeah. time. I'm going to let this shit burn down. That's the name yeah. of the game. Yeah. It's a duty. You yeah. know, you choose yeah. to do this. Like, like I, I, like for instance, I don't go out there when I fight, you know, because it's an entertainment business. I don't go out there and fight and be like, well, I'm just going to walk in there and just throw in the towel and just take my show purse. Mm -hmm. That'll be fucked up. Have yeah, I, nobody would like that. You know and what I'm saying? Dana bitch you out so quick, <laughs> probably let you go. Yeah, Dana, you know Dana, yeah, Dana, Dana White don't play like that. So <laughs> that's what we gotta understand. Like, first of all, anything that we do is shouldn't be a job. It should be something that we wanted to do, that we desire to do, that we want to try and help make better, or our contribution to society. But nowadays, being a police officer is like a job. Mm, we got motherfuckers yeah. waiting on the side of the road, just trying to catch a nigga for non-violent crimes mm. you know what i'm saying when they shoot, gotta fill a quota yeah that quota yeah. i told them about that quota and they were hella pissed too they're like no there's no quota i'm like all right man oh yeah they gotta fill that quota what's what's been your personal experience and also ill um i mean i know you told us one but if there's any mm -hmm. other um experiences with police officers uh not negative or positive doesn't really matter well there's a couple positive there, there was one positive one and it was funny <laughs> but I'll, I'll say that one first uh, me and my boy we were like in the neighborhood and we were young you know um and we were smoking uh we were smoking a blunt and then outside and it was dark and we were next we were like next to an alleyway uh -huh. and then all of a sudden Man, it is like a shadow, man. It's a big police guy, police officer, just like, just kind of like, just zoomed in right behind us. He's like, "Yo!" And we're like, we just got spooked. He's like, "What oh, you doing?" And then like, we were just sitting there, like frozen, blunt in hand, and everything. <laughs> and he just reached over, his arm just reached over, grabbed it, and just hit it. But this motherfucker was black, like he black. Hit it? And so you like all you right. saw, all you yeah. saw was his eyes and the cherry. Wait, he you hit it in, like, in uniform? Yeah, he hit it in uniform. Wow! And then passed it back to us. He's like. 
be careful. There's some bad cops out here. You know what I'm saying? And like, like, wow. What a fucking movie. It was, a, it, was, it was like one of those moments. I like, a music wait, video. Wait, where, where did he come from? Like, yeah. where? Out of right. nowhere. Like, the nigga just. God? And he disappeared. Like, he disappeared the same way. We looked at the oh It was like. <laughs> into the fog. Just, into the night sky. Nah, I <laughs> Yo. We were fucking high as shit, probably. But Yo. still, it looked like it, it was just so crazy. That's hilarious. But then. That's crazy. The other ones are not so positive. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh. So this is th- th- this is a part of a huge story. Like, um, I remember getting at a, a par- I, w- I was leaving a party from a high school party. I was in high school, and I was driving a Honda Civic at that time. And I left the party because this whole thing just sucked. You know, I was dating a girl, and then I went to the party, saw her like making out with some other dude. Fuck. But then again, like I, I got to admit, like I was kind of a, <clears throat> I wasn't a go getter, man. When like I was a younger. pushover. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I was just like, like. I was a hopeless romantic, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Damn straight. And, and I that, know the time. And, and that respect. Kind of, it's like, I, I I, didn't feel... I don't know. It just wasn't in my mind. Like, oh, let me just get with these bitches just to do this and do that. You know? Like, yeah. I was just look, always looking for a relationship. But, um, so... And I was upset, so I left the party because, you know, if I stayed, I'd probably... Fight that boy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I left the party. My car ends up fucking shutting down on me. Fuck, bro. What a night. <laughs> and then it starts raining and shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. my God. Oh, my God, yo. <laughs> but I'm only like... The same cop comes back. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, yo, like seven do? years after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I start pushing my car, you know? Like, oh, whatever. Shit. I start pushing my car. I'm only like half a mile away from home. And then all of a sudden, this fucking cop car just comes screeching behind me like... It like oh, stops boy. like oh like God. close, you know. I even jump out from behind the car. You're like, oh, this motherfucker might yeah, hit me. You know what I'm real. saying? It's wet out here and shit. <laughs> and then, bro, this guy jumps out, man, and he looks like the staple for the Aryan race. I'm telling you. Oh my <laughs> God, <laughs> yo! <laughs> this guy came out with blo- and like I, I don't know What's why, that? but something the inside staple me, for the Aryan yeah. race. Something inside me is like oh, I got. I'm in some trouble. Yeah. You know what I'm no, he was clean shaven, just blonde, uh, like spiked hair. Oh god. Blue of all Amer- American eyes. Psycho yeah. type shit. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And he just jumped out the car fast, gun already drawn. What, what the You know f- what I'm saying? No. Don't move, get down, and then show me your license. So I'm like, Okay. I'm pushing oh, a car. Fuck like- you want me to, I, I, do I get down first? Do I show you my license? <laughs> yeah. like, like, Give me your license. So I go to reach to grab my license. Ever and so then he's like, Shh, don't move. And I'm like, oh fuck. So I just lay down and I'm like, just grab my license. It's in my back pocket and do whatever you need to fucking do. Oh, yeah. You know, for real. I'll just like, yourself, bro. Yeah, I'm just gonna kiss pavement for right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then he he checks all my shit and then he tells me not to move. He just keeps me laying down on the floor, and then comes back and I guess everything's clear. Obviously, obviously, I got my shit legitimate. Okay. But then, um, he's his excuse was. He thought I was stealing the car. Who out here? Oh I was just thinking God. that. Who's out here stealing cars? Yeah, yeah. Pushing cars down but, the street. Yeah, yeah I'm going to push my stolen car. Oh, God. It's like, oh, shit, I'm on the Civic. All right, I'm out of here. And then I'm just going <laughs> to start oh, shit. Push it down the Let's block. Let's get the Civic, baby. <laughs> and just start pushing it. So that was one of them. And uh, then, and I feel like they do they do a lot of this stuff to, I, they, I feel like they do these things. A lot of it is to fuck with you, to fuck with people, almost to pacify them. To kind of put them in a state of mind to where they're going to be used to this kind of shit happening, mm-hmm. you know. And as a as a revolutionist, entirely, bro, I don't like motherfuckers one getting too close to me or mm-hmm. kind of trying to tell me what to fucking do, you know, or how mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, it sucks. I, I could never, I, I wouldn't survive, or I wouldn't survive just to the fact because we're going to go to the end of it, mm-hmm. <laughs> just to have my freedom. But um, one time, they actually came to my house this time. Wow. So I guess there was a traffic violation, like 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 unpaid tolls, I guess maybe something like that, and they were sending the warrant or the bench warrant to uh, or I mean the summons the to the court to literally the turnpike. It was to no address. It was to the fucking turnpike. So it was going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? And then they come to my house with fucking like it was like ten cars parked outside of my house. Wow. Motherfuckers came showing up in police uniforms, SWAT team uniforms, body armor, AR-15s on them and shit what and everything. F- like, I'm like, 
And I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm like, bro, did my brother do something? Did my yeah, brother yeah. fucking... That's brother, the first thing. That's like, when y'all that idiots damn brother. Up. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my brother flipped out and fucking probably killed somebody out. Yo, the club and shit. You know, he yeah. didn't come home till late last night, man. <laughs> Maybe something happened, you know? Like, yeah. I was, where was he? I'm like, what the fuck is going on, really? And they came in like six in the morning, banging on the door. And um, first of all, let me tell you how they came in. They came mm. in, banging on the door. And I have an AK-47 in my room. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I hear this fucking bang. Like it, it sounded like somebody was trying to knock the fucking door down. And mm. I'm upstairs, so I'm like scared as fuck. So I had that shit already cocked back, yeah. and I'm just already aiming down the oh stairs. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my yeah. brother opens the door, and I see as a cop. So I just, you know, like I, I, I tuck that shit away, and I walk down the stairs. They have all their guns pointed on me. They're already inside my house, you know, pointing what at the stairs. The I'm like, what the fuck's fuck? going on? And then like, and then it says you have a bench warrant out for your arrest. And I'm like, for what? And it's like for this for that traffic violation that I had. What the that, fuck? And then I looked at the address, like, we, we sent we sent it to you for months, you never answered. And I'm like, and I looked at the address, I'm like, bro, you know, this is not this is not even an address. You know what I'm saying? And I'm showing them right there. It's like, we're well, gonna have to come down to the station with us anyway, and this and that, whatever. What the These fuck? are taxpayer, taxpayers' dollars. They bring me to the station, they strip me down, they hose me down and everything. Wow. And they put me into the fucking um, <laughs> felony tank with all the fucking oh felonies God. and shit. You know Christ. what I'm saying? Yo. And then it's just, Christ. and they kept me there all day. You know, until my fucking bell went through. You know and, Asada Shakur? No. You know Tupac or anybody like this? Are you like a, somebody we don't know? Or <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. That's a lot for... For, for nothing. For, for, for nothing. For nothing. You know, like, and That's I know. a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. They acted like they uh, caught uh, Pablo Escobar. I know. Like, it was, yeah, and and, and their money. excuse was like, oh, we came out here like this because we know what you do for a living. And it's like, oh. yeah, so like, I'm going to go fight wow. 10 motherfuckers with... Assault rifles. Wow. Yeah. Like That's yeah, like so... I'm like like fuck man, like my emotions gonna get the best of me like that. Like damn, niggas got no faith in humanity. Oh my god, they the, really don't. I they think really don't. The level of fear that they have is incredible. But for he, them to even say they, so saw, they saw your highlights, they're like, we don't wanna fuck with him. <laughs> so, so why do I want that kind of person freaking out supposedly in my protection? Yeah, I want a calm motherfucker, you know, that got my back. I don't want this motherfucker like freaking out. I, that shit happened to me in paintball before, where a motherfucker freaks out and shoots his own teammates. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't yeah. need that shit. Uh, you know, you, you that see person that, should not own a gun, by the way. Yeah. If you play Call of Duty, like, like yeah. you got that friend that's like, oh, sh keep shooting. Yeah. It's like, damn, nigga, you see the blue name on top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Yo, but yeah, like, so yeah, things are fucked up. But honestly, they're they're not far away from change um we just like tupac said we definitely have to w change the way we think the way we eat and the way we treat each other mm. you know the food that we're eating the food that they're feeding us especially in impoverished neighborhoods and in schools come on it's shit food yeah you know what i'm oh, saying yeah. honestly like we live in a day and age where we don't have to do a lot of the things that we're doing but if we're going to call ourselves something and i think at the end that that's where true health begins is integrity if we're going to call ourselves something and we're going to say that we're this or we're that and we're doing this then let's be that Hell yeah. You know, because that's where change happens and it starts with, with from within. It will spread without, but it starts from within. If you can't change, you can never change the things around you. And that's where we got to start. The reason why, a big reason why I don't eat meat or I don't eat any of the shit that, they, that the government wants to feed me, I think it's slave food. Mm. I think it's what they fed my ancestors to keep them enslaved. I think it makes people lethargic, lazy, and sick and nearly dead. And that's why they got you hooked on their shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think it does, honestly. It makes a society of weaklings and pacifists. And I don't want to be that. People can tell me, oh, man, Alex, you're too adamant about this sh shit. You're too passionate. Oh, you get angry. No, I'm just, I, I just don't, I just don't eat the bullshit. Mm. I'm just not, I'm just fed up with the bullshit. I'm not going to take it. So I'm not going to have nobody um, step on my dreams or step on my freedoms Hell just yeah. because I'm going to, because it makes you feel comfortable. Mm. So I think we, we all have to have a little bit of, that upright righteousness all within us that little fire I believe you know for yourself, be man. under our ass that keeps us you know disciplined that keeps us true to ourselves oh, yeah. you know because i think that's the biggest crime is we start living a lie and i feel like most of us man the minute we walk out the door we're lying to ourselves mm. and everybody else around us it's so hard to be yourself and it is very fucking hard to be yourself man i find it hard sometimes especially with people that you care about people that you don't want to upset you know what I'm saying? But I don't want to live in a fear-based um, um, world anymore. There's no love in that. Mm. You know, there's no love in fear. Fear is respect. I mean, love is respect. You know, and sometimes it's harsh. Sometimes it's hard to take. But that's what love is, is I'm going to tell you what you need to hear no matter how you feel about it. Fear is I'm not going to tell you the truth because you might feel a certain way about it. So there ain't no love in that, man. And I think we need to start 
stop arguing with each other over opinions and start speaking to each other with facts. And the fact is, is that if we have a lot of the issues, especially African-American communities, because even though a lot of Cubans and Dominicans don't believe it, you know, we're fucking African first. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We're, 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 we're <clears throat> black as fuck. You know what I'm saying? A lot of Dominicans got sickle cell. That is a, that is a trait only um, mm-hmm. perceived by Africans or, or mostly by Africans. So mm. it's just, it's, it, it's in the bloodline. You definitely and, embrace it 100%. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's shown that people of sub-Saharan or subtropical or tropical environments mm-hmm process fruits raw fruits and vegetables better probably because it grows around a lot mm. easier you know and, that, and there was more geographical right, location yeah, about, yeah where um people that come from northern europe or places like that it's proven that their skin's thicker probably they'll deal with the cold <clears throat> and they can process dairy better and meat better than um mm. than africans or people in a that place are tr- where there's less vegetation exactly so yeah, yeah we're all generally the same I, I feel vegetables and fruits will help anybody out it's been proven to reverse every fucking disease you know but um, people are more tolerable to different food sources because of the places that they were living for so many years. You know, mm-hmm. almost every African American is lactose intolerant because mm-hmm. we never needed fucking milk. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. milk we needed was from mama's titty, and that's about it. Praise and God. Af- praise God. <laughs> after that, <laughs> there was plenty of fruits and vegetables around to grow in the fucking jungles near the rivers and waterways that was warmer climates and everything. But up there, you only had a few seasons. So yeah, you did have to eat meat and probably drink milk, and that's why they're better at processing it than we are. What does the um, the typical uh, menu uh, for Bruce Leroy look like on a day to day basis? Well, I usually don't eat breakfast. Um, I don't eat till like maybe one or two o'clock in the afternoon. But is that fasting or just because? No, just because I'm, I'm usually high on coffee in the morning, and no. I just don't feel hungry in the morning. Um, but I really don't try and have a schedule. I eat whatever I want. I try new dishes. Like the other day, my wife made, um, a vegan lasagna and it was really good. So we just like to experiment. We like to eat whatever we want. We just try to make sure we incorporate a variety of, um, whole foods and vegetables. Is she vegan as well? Yeah. Nice. And how does, um, how how does she uh take your your career is she has she fully come to terms with it or is she terrified every time you go out there um <laughs> i guess um the response is <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> next I, question <laughs> <laughs> i guess she gets scared sometimes but um she's she's okay with it uh i don't, I don't know i i haven't really heard you know, Any their, out, their outlooks on my career so much. For sure, for sure, <laughs> for sure. No, no, no. Uh, my bad. Um, what do you, um, as far as uh, you were talking about earlier, um, speaking to people who who you can learn from or who they are where you want to be, etc. Um, and you were talking about the future. Where do you see yourself? Um, you know, down the line, what do you, what are some, uh, goals, um, you know, 10 years from now or, 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 or what do you talk to about, you know, what do you talk about with these people, um, that they give you insights? Well, um, for the future, man, mm. I, I feel like it's always been the reason why I wanted to do martial arts, um, was definitely to get out of a state of helplessness, mm. you know, to feel able to just to feel able, I guess you know was a was a major thing in it so i think that's one thing that i can never give back so i think what i would like to do the ultimate goal was always to become a teacher hell yeah in martial arts you know um the ufc is something that kind of happened mm. and it's nice you know i'm gonna take it as far as i can and <laughs> hell I'm, yeah i'm gonna enjoy the ride but um ultimately i just wanted like i've always saw myself just being in you know just a like an old martial art um teacher you know teaching people because i feel like it, it's a big thing because i didn't come from the best of neighborhoods and i feel like martial arts or just even the idea of martial arts, just the philosophy of martial arts saved my life, you know, from going down the wrong path or um, or just uh, just falling into the mediocrity of yeah. society, you know, just... So I think that's what I want to definitely give back, um, show people that we, we have power, you know, to take responsibility for our own lives, to do what we want to do. And I think a lot of that stems from not being able to defend yourself, not knowing how, not being sure of yourself in general. And not being sure of yourself physically can cause so many other uncertainties down 
later down the line. You know, there's yeah. a lot of guys that um, are in. I feel I believe every male, first of all, should be in physical shape mm. and should practice some type of way of self defense because I think oh, that's yeah. that, that that's why a lot of guys beat their wives. You know, oh, there's a they lot. Don't have anybody else to take it out on? Yeah, them? not only that, because they can't challenge anybody else that way, and not only that, they feel insecure. Oh, you yeah. know, and, and the insecurity can stem from well, maybe she wants that guy that knows how to yep. fight and is strong or is in shape, mm. and then so and then they start making up this whole fantasy and they get angry yeah. at this person without even talking to him. And they're insecure, so they won't fight that guy, but they'll yeah. fight the woman. Yeah, exactly. So and and but that's just that's just one thing. And then you got bullies because of that. You also have um, this toxic masculinity in society, and there is toxic masculinity, but the, but we have to differentiate that because I know? know you're very pro. You know, you want that old sense of masculinity to come back but you don't want the toxic part yeah, of it yeah yeah and and what i mean is that like it's kind of like how can i explain this so back in the day right being a hood nigga <laughs> was like a nigga like you know what i'm saying if i had a problem with you i'm gonna come up to your face and we're gonna square up and we're gonna squat and we're gonna settle this shit but now being a hood nigga is like sneak a nigga from behind like oh you see how hard i am I yeah. hit that motherfucker when he wasn't looking. Exactly, yo. Sucker punch I'm a and tough shit. guy. You know what I'm saying? I seen this other video, like this guy literally fist fighting a, a woman. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And, saying and saying like, I'm tough. I hit hard. Yeah, you saw it. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I didn't I didn't know the, the bar yeah. Yeah, was yeah. dropped down so low. So low. So I just believe that, especially men, you know, men in society, you know, especially if we, we, we have this revere for men, you know, it's a male dominated world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just how come you not how come you just don't hold yourself to a higher standard? How come you don't just pick yourself up? There's one thing about being confident in yourself and being sure, and then there's another thing of being egotistical. Egotistical needs to needs to yell and scream and bark and say that it has bite. Mm -hmm. You know, a confident person is never gonna go out there and scream it in your face. He'll tell you, and if you don't believe him, touch him and see what happens. <laughs> you know, but it's but it's true. Like I I I and and I think I just feel like the youth today, and for a while too, man. We're just going into a, you know, we everybody getting soft. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, Craig, I'm gonna say it right now. Everybody oh. getting soft. <clears throat> what was yeah. um, what was your experience like um, in the? You were talking about the backyard brawls, and I believe it was the same circuit that uh, Jorge Masvidal was fighting in, um, and I believe it was hosted by Data Five Thousand and uh, Kimbo Slice. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. It was a while back ago. Yeah, that was um so I was training with um uh Level Martinez. Okay. Uh one of the uh, one of the gyms and he used to come to the gym and train and stuff. And then um I guess he was a part of the, the Latin syndicates, if I'm oh. not mistaken. Uh huh. And um he came down and saw me training and whatnot and we trained with each other a few times and he and he thought I was very good. So he's like, Oh, how about you come out to the backyards and represent us? for these fights and whatnot and so basically it was just it was it, it was a fight but like yeah. it, it, it was definitely you only did it once no, no i did a few times okay it, but it was i guess back in the day it was the most organized fight i've ever been in oh yeah yeah <laughs> okay and tell me a little bit of, uh, about that i mean because i had seen one it wasn't the same it wasn't like the same circuit but i had seen a street brawl with uh, with Kimbo and like an ex cop, and it was just brutal. It was like a ten minute round. Yeah, and, like they were just gassed by the end. Um, did it have a little bit of structure? Like, did they? Was there any ground game? Was there any? You know, was there rounds? Well, it depended on what the opponents wanted to do. You know, so it's just if everybody was cool with everything, then it would be everything. If they just wanted to fight with just boxing, they'll just do boxing. Mm. Um, a real fight club right there. Yeah, a real yeah. fight club. Mm. So it's just whatever you wanted to do, whatever you're comfortable with, and. So I always just choose everything goes just because yeah. I want it. I, I just feel like it's more of a test, you know, like because in those kind of fights, shit can get really gritty. And I think that's the real test of characters. What are you going to do when all odds are stacked against you? And mm -hmm. I want to see that in myself. I want to see what who I am. And I want to answer that question every time. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, before, before we wrap up, um, I wanted to ask you, where do you see... The rest of 2020 going where do you see the resolution of uh the protest do you think there will be a resolution um uh, tell me what you expect from the rest of this year um i'm just kind of going with the flow I, I really have no expectations with the whole um protest and everything i think we can find 
a solution and I think we can find a peaceful solution that can benefit everybody but at the same time focusing on the necessities of the people in um, lower income neighborhoods, the people that are being affected the most. I think we just start helping each other. Honestly, what I would like to try and push, you know, when I get an actual place, I'm looking for land to, to do stuff like this, mm. is almost promote the idea that every, like for instance, if the whole neighborhood, you know, if everybody had a backyard garden, you know, and was helped out and everybody helped each other grow stuff for different things, man, we would be getting for free the very things that we think is too expensive to eat healthy. Yeah, a lot we of shit. Yeah, we'll be getting organic fruits and vegetables, and this is fucking Florida. You can grow anything here. Yeah. And easy. So if we were doing that, like, especially people in lower income communities, if they were doing that community gardens and everything, we won't have to pay a damn dime for organic produce. And then we'll all be helping each other out. And not only that, we'll, we'll save more money to invest in our own businesses and taking back the communities. And stop being gentrified every fucking six months or so, you know. Oh, yeah. So I think that's the major change that we have to do. First, we got to provide ourselves with the basic necessities of living in order to free up mental space to philosophize for, of higher planes of living, so that we can get out of the rut that we're in. So we can stop pointing a finger and blaming people. Fuck it, fine, it is their fault, but they're not going to do anything about it. So let's we start should. making a change. Damn mm. shit, God damn, that's beautiful right there. That is beautiful. Um, <clears throat> Alex, do you have any uh, any sponsors, uh, your gym, anybody that you want to shout out so we can uh, put on the screen? Uh, if you want to talk about them for a second, we can. Well, um, I just want to give a shout out to my gym, of course, all my teammates and training partners, Freedom Fighters, um, and of course, Master Manolo. I also like to give a shout out to um, um, other gyms that had a, um, a hand in my process of growing the mma lab i was with them for six years benson henderson and john crouch you know they're amazing people um and really man um just in general to everybody out there uh we i just want us to really think about making a change and really making lives better not if not for us but for our children and the people that come after us you know let's try and leave the world a little bit better than when we found it so that you know, we can, I don't know, I feel like have a legacy that we can literally stand mm -hmm. behind. Oh, yeah. And just uh, not live with so many regrets, you know. All because it's not our responsibility to end the task doesn't mean we shouldn't take the responsibility to start it right now. I don't necessarily have to see the end. I just want to make sure that we're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So let's just be a little selfless, especially with each other, you know. And I don't know, I, th I, I think a lot of good can come out of it. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Il, you have anything uh, for we wrap yeah, up? Yeah, train cars better. So. Yeah, that's a damn <laughs> fact. <laughs> Craig? I agree with all this. This is good. This is a good show. It's a beautiful yeah, show. Good message. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let's say uh, let's say you go to UFC, a, a UFC event, mm. you know, and, and we have our very own Bruce Leroy fighting, mm. right? And you're like, oh, okay, okay, UFC has a bunch of... Of uh uh of uh you know laws that they're gonna implement on us, so we can't take any copyright footage. But if you film it with your own camera mm. and you don't know how to edit it, mm. and you're like, oh my god, I need to put forth all this Bruce Leroy footage together. Who are you gonna hit up? Mm. That, that's Tom M J Moore, and that's the editor with a dream. That's the editor with all the skills that you're gonna need. And after that, you are gonna have a Bruce Leroy compilation video that the UFC would be jealous of. Ladies and gentlemen, nice. Tom M J Moore nice. is where it's at. Mm -hmm. um, I can't thank you enough, Alex, uh, for coming on the show. Uh, we uh we definitely dived into a bunch of different topics uh got into you know veganism got into what's going on and we got into got to talk about your career which is uh definitely the the topic at hand again i thank you so much every thursday at midnight you know what it is or friday morning if you vibing on your way to work just tune in go on youtube hit that subscribe that follow go on instagram on spotify all that good stuff uh but yeah Again, Alex, brother, thank you so much. I thank you, and uh, can't wait to have you on again. Oh, thank you for having me, man. Thank can't wait brother. to be on. Hell yeah, brother. Thank you, man. Talk about anything, and it don't matter what the world thinks. You can say how you feel on Midnight in Miami. Well, you can push it to the limit.